Xiaomi finally unveiled the 13 series at MWC, or actually literally the day before MWC. So we have the 13, the 13 Pro, and of course the 13 Lite. Uh, one of the things I'll probably say is that this video is going to be primarily focused on the 13 Pro. We are going to cover the comparisons between the three different devices, but I'm going to share with you guys mostly the main benefits of having that one inch type sensor, the IMX989, and of course the Leica certification with basically Leica Vibrant and Leica Authentic mode and Dolby Vision as well on the 13 Pro. Uh, but I also want to talk a little bit as well about the 13 Lite because that one's actually featuring a, well, a processor from Qualcomm that we haven't seen on the market yet. That's the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 first one on the market and of course featuring that technology you know four nanometer in there as well so without further ado this is the 13 series with an emphasis on the 13 pro from xiaomi let's check them out like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel so in front of us are the three series the 13 Lite, the 13 the 13 pro this one is going to be available in a couple of colors, but the main benefit, of course, here is that we're looking at the entire Xiaomi 13 series. Keep in mind, I did push out a video uh, separately on the watch itself. This is the new brand new watch that Xiaomi also announced, as well as the Buds Pro, uh, the Buds 4 Pro uh, that they also announced as well. The biggest thing I'll probably say is that Leica certification is only present on the standard and on the 13 Pro. Uh, both the standard and the 13 Pro are powered by the 8 Gen 2. That's going to be the latest processor from Qualcomm. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our specification here. We're talking about the uh, basically the 7 Gen 1. All three are 4 nanometer processors, except this is going to be basically a mid-range processor, the successor kind of to the 788 or the 765 that we've seen in the past. But this is now in line with the Gen series, or at least the new generation of processors from Qualcomm when it comes down to SOCs. Now, overall, uh, battery capacity kind of goes up in, in capacity. It's, it's easy to kind of go through. 4,500, 4,500, both charging at 67 watts. And here we have 4,820 at 120 uh, watts. And that's going to be included in the jar, in the box. And it is actually going to be a gang charger. That's one of the biggest things, of course, in there. USB-A to USB-C cable included in the charger. Both of these devices will also include uh, the chargers in the box. And they're going to be 67 watt charging. As far as speakers uh, or as far as camera stack on the back, this is where it's going to get a little bit interesting. On the 13 Pro, we're looking at the 50 megapixel. That's going to be the primary 23 millimeter camera. It's going to be the IMX989 at f1.9. Um, here, well, actually, let's keep going through here. 50 megapixel is going to be the 70 millimeter equivalent telephoto lens at 3.2x. And we also have a 14 millimeter ultra wide. It is another 50 megapixel. So a triple 50 megapixel camera stack on the back, which basically kind of gives you that <laughs> essence that this is really the Pro that they're shooting for. Now, on the 13, we're looking at a slightly different experience. A 54 megapixel is going to be the main sensor. That's going to be the IMX800, a very capable processor. It's equivalent to about 23 millimeters. Uh, similar, but slightly different. Uh, not a one inch sensor. That's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is a 10 megapixel. That's going to be a 75 millimeter telephoto lens at f2.0 and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. That's going to be our main camera sa stack on the back with 120 field of view here. Uh, and of course, on the 13 Pro, it's going to be 115 field of view with that 14 millimeter lens. On the 13 Lite, essentially, that's going to be the lightest edition. Primary camera is the IMX766, a 50 megapixel camera sensor. And of course, uh, we also have a two megapixel macro lens that's gonna be giving us the bottom section there. Last but not least is an eight megapixel ultra wide with 119 field of view. So closer field of view here. You probably have noticed by now that it, the 13 Lite is bigger than the 13 and slightly smaller than the 13 Pro. And that's, there's an intention there. Um, all three of them are featuring a 32 megapixel camera sensor in the front with a wide app with a wide field of view 100 field uh, 100 degrees field of view here um, and 89.9 89.6 essentially almost 80 uh, 90 uh, degrees field of view on both on these the camera stack here though is slightly different we actually have two cameras on the 13 light and that's going to be uh, basically a 32 megapixel depth camera and an 8 megapixel depth sensor when it comes down to the displays and what we have in here, all three of these devices are featuring 120 frames per second refresh rate. The display size goes from basically a 6.73 uh, Full HD QHD resolution with curved edges on, both, on the 13 Pro. The standard 13 is going to actually be a flat display and it's going to be 120 frames per second at 1080p resolution. Same thing running here on the 13 Lite. It's going to be a 1080p resolution, 120 frames per second refresh rate. So, but this one is actually going to about 6.55 as opposed to the 6.36 that we have here on the right. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The 13 is really more intended to be a small form factor version of it with a flat display. 
of course, stereo speakers. Uh, we don't have stereo speakers on the 13 uh, Lite. That's going to be a mono, but we do have two camera sensors, as I mentioned, the 32 and the 8, uh, of course, for the, the depth sensor on we have. And of course, the two 32 megapixel cameras that we have in there. So between the three, this is pretty much the comparison as far as specifications and the design uh, language is different. The other thing is curved edges on the light, which is a little bit different than what we have with the 13 standard 13 model. Uh, so overall, I'll definitely be doing more focused videos on the 13 and the 13 Lite. Let me know what you like, what would you guys like me to focus there. But for now, let's go ahead and talk about the 13 Pro. Now, I will say that all these devices include the charger as well as a case in the box. So this is a see-through case, so you're not going to have to worry about it. And there is a pre-applied screen protector on all three of these devices. Fingerprint sensor is in the center here. And of course, we have a power button and volume rocker on the right. Uh, nothing on the bottom, on the right, on the left side there. Uh, USB-C speaker on the bottom. And of course, we have the IR blaster, top mounted speaker, as well as one of the microphones for the camera. Uh, the UI elements here, of course, this is MIUI 14 on top of Android 13. And as you can see here, the model number is Xiaomi 13 Pro. This is the global model. Now, the model that I have here has 512 gigs of internal storage. There's going to be different configurations available on the market. The 13 Pro is going to be basically uh, configured at 12256 or 12, 512, uh, 512 for the storage. The standard 13 is going to be an 8 to 12 gigabytes of RAM and basically a single uh, configuration for storage 256. The light is going to be an 8 gigs of RAM only with 128 or 256 gigs of storage. Now, this is running MIUI 14 on top of Android 13, so that's one thing to keep in mind with December 1st security patch update on here. And again, global 14.0.11 uh, on the global ROM for MIUI. Very nice. Of course, we have Google Play services built in here. Everything is built in out of the device, nearby share, all the Google services that we expect. The default Xiaomi uh, you know, configuration menu here, if you can swipe one more, open up the notification panel, swipe this way. And this one kind of takes us into the toggles. You can configure them, add different options. And of course, you see their nearby share, hotspot. And one of the best things I also like is the fact that we're also able to configure the performance on the 13 and the 13 Pro with the 8 Gen 2. The 13 Lite does not have a performance mode. So if you jump into battery mode, it goes directly into well, settings first, go into battery mode. You'll notice here that we have a performance menu. By default, it's configured to be under balanced. So what I end up doing is usually when I'm running a benchmark, I always turn it on to performance. And that will give us essentially this best performance that we can get from the Agent 2. Practically a 2000 score on the single score, and of course 5214 on the multi-score. Big benefit, of course, is that we're able to get the best performance on here in that performance mode. If you don't want to turn it on the full performance, keep it up on medium. You're still going to be able to great, get great performance out of it, but again, more of a tailored experience in that sense. Now, as far as speed test, I did run the speed test on uh, my 13 because the model at the time I had my SIM card in it, I got this one ahead of the 13 Pro. So overall, again, you're able to pick up 5G signal in the US. This was on T-Mobile. And of course, you're able to clock in pretty decent speeds. 298 down and 34 up. That's actually pretty decent considering uh, this is, a again, an import for a device into the U.S. market. Now, before we go too far, please make sure to keep, in, uh, keep an eye out. I did push out a video on their brand new watch as well as the brand new buds as well. So you notice I'm wearing the watch right now, and then there's a the few applications that are in there. Um, overall, as far as customization, this is standard. You have, uh, obviously, video lock screen wallpaper. Let's go ahead and unlock that. You can always do that, and this is something that I love about, uh, basically, uh, what we get here directly with Xiaomi devices and MIUI for years. Uh, overall, we have the ability of opening up the app launcher. You have the search bar at the bottom, um, all the configuration that we've talked about before, all the customizations that we've seen. Let's go ahead and bring down the sound here into uh, MIUI 14. And of course, so we have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connectivity, always on display, sound and vibration, wallpaper, home, notification, control uh, center. By the way, if you want to switch the control center back to the way it looks like in standard Android, you're able to do that in that configuration there. Just a little bit of a tip. Password, security, privacy, uh, battery, as we talked about, performance system in here. Additional settings give us access to language, region, and of course, this accessibility, uh, quick ball, one-handed mode, and screen recorder configuration, gesture shortcut, as well as accessibility options in there. When we jump into Xiaomi account, you're able to log into yours. Of course, I logged into mine as well, Google account, and of course, all of the other options. Uh, I did receive one update since I've received this unit, so overall, it is running the latest software version as of now. Camera experience is literally where this is at. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it in any other way. You'll notice branding from Leica here, like Authentic to Leica Vibrant. I prefer the, the Vibrant color a little bit more than Authentic, but if you want to take something closer to what a DSLR would be, the Leica Authentic will definitely give you that experience. AI mode for both photo, ultra-wide. You'll notice we have three different settings here, or four. 
The two is actually a lossless 2x mode on, on here. So you're losing, you're not losing any quality in image when you're jumping from the main sense, well, from the main uh, shot directly into uh, the 2x. So that's going to be the same main sensor, the primary one inch sensor. And then of course we have that telephoto lens that we talked about again, a 50 megapixel, the ultra wide also present in here. Uh, when it comes down to video, let's go ahead and jump into the back. You'll notice I have Dolby Vision turned on right now. We are able to turn it on directly within the settings. We're able to shoot 8K at 24 frames per second, 4K 60 frames per second. And if you go into the settings, you're able to turn on the Dolby Vision uh, in this option in here. Just be aware, uh, it may not be compatible with everything. But I will say, this is one of my favorite features of MIUI 14. It is the teleprompter mode. And this is something that they added, and I'm not sure if this is, I guess maybe if I missed it in the past, but this is something that enables us to, while recording video, the ability of having a teleprompter built into the game, well, not the game, but directly into the system, allowing us to actually read our notes and we can configure the speed, uh, the change the text, pause it, and do everything we want at the same time. And let's say you're recording yourself in a front-facing experience, you can still use the teleprompter mode as well. And what I love about that is you actually don't have to look away. Your experience is pretty much, let's go ahead and just touch it here your experience stays the same and it looks absolutely fantastic. On the front facing camera experience here, we are capped at 1080p 30 frames per second. That's something that we unfortunately don't have control over. It's been like that for some time. We do have document mode, pro mode that enables us to actually use additional options for either both video or for photography. So you can switch between the two photo, portrait, night mode, and of course, more for the full 50 megapixel readout, panorama, short video, vlog mode, slow motion, time lapse, of course, movie frame, uh, sorry, movie effects, lawn exposure for those nice little streaks of light. I'm going to try to share with you guys some of those images. Super moon, dual video, of course, clone, and of course, you can customize and reorganize the different modes. I'm going to do a quick sample of the front facing and back facing camera on the brand new Xiaomi 13 Pro. Uh, keep in mind the front facing camera experience is exactly the same as what we see with the 13 as well as the 13 Lite. The 13 Lite has an additional sensor for depth, but that's not necessarily in video. So 1080p on the front is going to be exa an example of all three, but the main sensor on the back, we're going to be shooting there uh, with that 4K60 goodness. Now, typically I do this video for you guys from my home, from my backyard. Now, I'm actually at the hotel finishing editing this specific video, and of course I wanted to shoot a quick clip for you guys uh, with the front facing camera. Now, this is going to be ta uh, capped at 1080p 30 frames per second. We do have Dolby Vision, which actually does turn on, and that's one of the main benefits here. So, this is a good example of audio and video from the front facing camera on the 13 Pro. Now, we're switching it over to the main sensor on the brand new 13 Pro. Now, this is the one inch sensor, the IMX989. Of course, 50 megapixels, and this is going to be the best image possible. Well, I would say this is going to be the best performer on this device. Uh, 4K60 is what I'm shooting with right now with Dolby Vision, so hopefully pretty decent experience. It's actually, uh, you can probably see right there, I'm at the edge of a hill. The hotel is really, really nice. But we're t literally within hours of the launch event, so this is the latest image and video quality I can get you guys straight off of the 30 Pro before the launch event, the global launch event of this device. Now, as usual, whenever we do our audio test there, obviously we did our video test, is of course playing Alex Crindo Jumbo by NCS release. Let's go ahead and put the volume at 100%. Uh, and of course we have stereo speakers that are present, but they're both facing in outdoor directions. So for the best experience, holding the phone in your hand and of course opening your arms like this or your, your wrists like that, uh, you're definitely gonna get the best experience in that, in that sense. So let's go ahead and start playing. Definitely very nice. There's some bass into that as well. Not the loudest ones on the market, but definitely one of the better options for audio and as well as, of course, for gaming. If you're listening to calls or even playing games, you're not gonna be disappointed. Uh, now, one of the things I definitely wanted to mention to you guys, of course, as far as the experience here, is that this is running the 8th Gen 2, one of the most powerful processors on the market right now. It has 12 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of internal storage, so there's no question we have more than enough. So when it comes down to gaming, I went ahead and got a chance to install both PUBG Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile. And of course, we do have the game system in here that you're able to customize. And of course, we have access to the gaming center here that we get the ability of customizing both the voice changer, uh, the ability of changing the DN do not disturb, screenshots, screen recording, uh, turn off uh, screen, of course, casting, Wi-Fi, uh, basically the brightness level and on screen control, of course, and the ability of boosting the frame rate when we're playing the game. Now, when it comes down to the gaming experience, the best experience is going to be obviously in Ultra MP, and that's going to be in medium resolution. We can go ultra fat, well, very high, but then that, that actually drops the frame rate. As you're looking at that example of the game that I'm sharing with you guys right now, gaming on this is absolutely going to be fantastic. There's no question. Uh, more than enough power. The display runs at 120 frames per second. We can definitely accommodate higher refresh rates, uh, and it looks absolutely great uh, on the device and, of course, in video, as I'm showing you guys right now. 
One of the best areas I'll probably say this device is shining, of course, is the camera experience. Now, the biggest thing about this device is, of course, the main sensor on the back. That one inch type sensor is going to be the star of the show. This makes this device a professional tool for camera photography as well as video recording. It records not only in standard video with, again, the Leica Authentic as well as the Leica, uh, you know, the, the Leica Authentic and the Vibrant mode. Vibrant is going to be probably closer to what you typically see, a little bit more punched up, a little bit more closer to ready to go straight to social media, ready to post. And of course, the Authentic gives you the ability of being able to do a little bit more work in either basically color correcting or color grading, and of course, providing a little bit more editing into that. So it depends on the experience you're trying to go. Dolby Vision is in there, but be aware, not every system will be compatible with that. So be aware if you do shoot in that, some apps may not be able to play this content. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, what I want to share also with you guys is I'm actually going to be going to the launch event in Barcelona. Now, of course, Xiaomi is releasing this right before Barcelona starts. So not only are they going to have these devices on the show floor, but they're also going to have, of course, a few other things like the watch, the buds and so on, as well as other features, of course, in, inside of the Xiaomi 13 Pro. For me, the camera on this is absolutely fantastic. You're seeing some images that I took, not only from my hometown, but from a trip to New York, and of course, a trip all the way back to, well, all the way to Barcelona. So this is where the experience gets a little bit different. I'm actually gonna be at the launch event uh, by the time this video goes live. So still early stages of basically exploring and enjoying this device as far as the 13 Pro. I can definitely say that between the three devices, there is something for everybody. If you want a small, nimble, very fast processor, and of course, very nice, capable device, I think the 13 is a very nice option, and you'll see some content from there. My buddy Juan Carlos is gonna be pushing out a video on the 13, uh, should be coming out roughly about the same time. Um, as far as the 13 Pro, I think, again, this is going to be where you're pushing the technology to the limit. The 989 is a very much bleeding technology level uh, experiences. And again, prior to this, only available on the 12S Ultra in China. Now we have it globally. Um, as far as the 13 Lite, that was actually a little bit of a surprise for me. What you're getting there is the 7 Gen 1, the first generation of the 7 Gen series that we heard from Qualcomm. We finally have it in a smartphone. Essentially, it's a mid-ranger type of a device, but the features that you get in there, the 1080p, 120 frames per second resolution display, very nice. Uh, the fact that we have obviously a decent processor in there, enough RAM, enough storage, you're not gonna be disappointed. I will be making more dedicated videos on that device specifically because I feel like we need to talk a little bit more about that. But for now, Xiaomi has something for everybody. They have the watch, they have the buds, and of course the devices to provide you so much solutions for everything that you could be looking for. Small, nimble, uh, large, professional, as well as more of a, a budget-friendly device. I think they have something for everybody. So thank you very much for Xiaomi for allowing me to have all of these devices to be able to share with you guys my experience. There'll be more content coming out very soon. And of course, let me know in the comments below, what would you like me to focus on in the next video regarding one of these three devices? This is TK. I'll see you in the next video.